like a lamb to slaughter. Uh, <laughs> really, I'm going to speak for the NSA now. Um, it's all going to be okay. I think that's what I'm going to say. So, um, my family uh, left the, their little village in uh, Belarus, the border of Russia and Poland, in 1932. You could say they fled, you know, the adorable shack and the delightful pogrom. You know, one too many, that's enough of that. And they took this ship, the Polonia, bound for Palestine, now Israel. And on the ship there was an epic event, a sailor gave my mother an orange, which became the stuff of legend in my family, sailor orange. And I just want to say that as epic events are going, this summer I'm going to go on a trip on the Lewis and Clark Trail in a Volvo, not a canoe, of course, and without Sacagawea, with Google. And um, I'm going to try to document every Napoleon, not the you know, idiotic CEO, but the, the dessert and um, hopefully have a map of all the Napoleons because we have a lot to, th we have a lot to thank him for. <laughs> so they came to Tel Aviv, which was Bauhaus and, you know, flooded with thousands and thousands of Zionists and refugees and tangos and cafes and bookstores and the beautiful Mediterranean. And um, they lived a difficult but really wonderful life. At the same time, in the early 30s, Branislaw Huberman, who was a Polish violinist, realized that it was critical for the, Jewish, for the Jews to get, at, to get the hell out of there and convinced several hundred musicians, Jewish musicians, and their families to come to Palestine and form the Palestine Philharmonic. At the same time, Arturo Toscanini, the flamboyant and tempestuous conductor, Pictured here with the Scala director, a Scala director, Gatti Kazaza. And if, you know, you should say that a few times every morning, Gatti Kazaza, it's such a wonderful name. Anyway, Toscanini was then taking a stand against fascism and saying he refused to go to Germany and perform for Hitler. And he was really getting on Mussolini's nerves, vexing him tremendously. So there was a lot of tension going on. And Huberman invited Toscanini to come to, to Tel Aviv and conduct the inaugural concert of the newly formed Palestine Philharmonic. And he did. Here they are in Tel Aviv. The performance uh, included Rossini and Brahms and Schubert, and it advertised coffee and eggs, something that you usually see in the, you know, the, Met, uh, you know, the Met programs these days. It was December 1936. It was a tremendous success, and it was an epic event in this time, in this turbulent time. And Toscanini wore that suit, those pants, and that jacket. By the way, Toscanini's son-in-law was Vladimir Horowitz, one of the greatest pianists of the 20th century and my personal pianistic idol. We left Tel Aviv in 1954 and came to the land of TV and Coca-Cola. Clearly, this was like our big moment when we, we sent photos to our family in Israel of our great TV. But we also had a really culture-stuffed life. We had, I had piano lessons and um, ballet lessons. We went to Carnegie Hall, we went to the Met. And at the same time, the Toscanini was there as well. He, so we had moved to, the Bronx, to Riverdale in the Bronx, and that's where Toscanini came, leaving Europe also. Here he is pictured with his grandson, Walfredo. And he, Walfredo, is important in this story. But anyway, they moved to, to the Bronx into a place not exactly the same kind of place that we lived in. And we, so they lived in Wave Hill in this mansion, and we lived next to Bo Sun Chinese restaurant and Mother's Bakery in Liebman's Deli. But, you know, uh, not that dissimilar. And actually, I often think that when, my, when we first came to America and I uh, had my first shrimp cocktail at Stella Doro, I thought clearly the, the heavens would open and I would be dead in five minutes, but instead I just had a delicious shrimp cocktail. And I also, I always think that maybe Toscanini was also sitting next to me having a delicious shrimp cocktail. So there he is frolicking in Wave Hill in his 30-acre estate. I continued piano lessons and I went to the High School of Music and Art to study music and, and was in the chorus and it was a glorious experience. We always said to each other when anybody wanted to meet anybody, meet you at Toscanini. So he was this fixture in the lobby of our room. And then last year I was reading in the newspaper that Walfredo, his grandson, had died and the entire Toscanini estate was going to be sold, sofas and silverware and all the artifacts of his life which interested me not at all, but they were also selling his pants. 
the same pants that he wore to conduct the Palestine Philharmonic. So I was there in a second. I was really, really nervous. I thought, this is not going to happen. These anti-Nazi, anti-fascist, love of Vladimir Horowitz, who I'm sure sat on his lap once in a while, perhaps, and other people that they, you know, other, other people touch those pants and, in various ways. And I really felt that I had to have them, and it was important that I have them, but I was sure I wouldn't get them, and the bidding was fierce, and it was really, really tense. But there is a good thing that happens in this world, and I, here I am, I have them. I don't know how he would feel, but here they are. Just going to Thank you.